Picture this. It's 2025 and you're stuck in traffic on I-95 for the third time this week, watching a TikTok of someone's grandfather asking, weren't we supposed to have flying cars by now? In 1962, the Jetsons promised sky commutes. Back to the Future said 2015, and yet, here we are, still earthbound. What gives? The inventors? They exist. The tech? It's here. Kind of. So what's the holdup? Well, it's not gravity, it's government. Let's start with some good news. Flying cars are real. Companies like Joby Aviation, LF, and Archer have built working vehicles. Joby has completed over a thousand test flights. LF is letting people pre-order a flying car for $300,000, no flux capacitor required. They're called eVTOLs, electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Think a drone, but car-sized. Backed by investors, airlines, and even, you guessed it, the US Air Force. So, if the tech exists, why can't you buy one at a local dealership? Here's the catch. Flying cars are part car, part plane. That means innovators have to face two entire bureaucracies, the FAA, aviation, and the NHTSA, cars. You'll need crash tests, emission tests, noise tests, pilot certification, FAA approval, and that one alone can take a decade, all before you ever make a sale. Economists call this an ex-ante regulatory regime. You need government permission before you innovate, and that creates massive barriers to entry. Compare that to cars where recalls happen after the fact. One system allows for experimentation and competition, the other stifles it, and this isn't new. Back in the 1970s, a working flying car called the Aero Car 3 was grounded, not by engine failure, but by new federal crash rules. The government added weighty requirements like crumple zones and reinforced bumpers. The result, a car that was literally too heavy to fly. It met the safety code for roads, but failed the laws of physics. Then came the AVE Mizar, essentially a Ford Pinto strapped to a Cessna. It crashed during testing, killing the developers. Regulators responded by tightening restrictions even further, making future innovation more expensive and less likely. It's a vicious cycle. Fear of failure leads to more regulation, which creates conditions that actually increase the chances of failure. Even if you survive the federal red tape jungle, your next boss is your neighborhood HOA. Flying cars can't just take off from your driveway. They need designated launch zones called vertiports and new systems to manage low altitude air traffic over cities. And right now, there is no plan. Local zoning boards haven't approved where these vehicles can fly, land, or even charge. And most cities aren't exactly racing to rewrite their airspace rules. Nobody wants propellers buzzing over their morning dog walk. And without clear property rights in the sky, it's hard to know who decides what's allowed and where. That's called a coordination problem. In a free market, entrepreneurs could solve it by negotiating with landowners, building quiet tech, or designing new infrastructure. But when every decision gets bottlenecked through a patchwork of city councils and permitting boards, there's no room for discovery. Then there's the energy problem. Flying takes serious power, but today's batteries are too heavy and don't store enough juice. A serious problem if you're trying to offload weight for flight. What about jet fuel? It's a more energy dense option, but scaling it for millions of flying cars would require major investment investments in refinery capacity. But there's a secret third option, nuclear power. One ounce of enriched uranium holds as much energy as 10,000 gallons of gasoline. If nuclear tech hadn't been stigmatized and over-regulated into stagnation, we might have ultra-compact supercharged flying car engines by now. Why shouldn't we? Microchips got smaller and faster because they were left alone, but energy innovation strangled by red tape. For over 150 years, energy use per capita increased exponentially and with it, technological advancements. Think cars, planes, rockets, and the man on the moon. But starting in the 70s, that energy use flatlined. As Jay Storrs Hall argues in the book, Where Is My Flying Car? technological advancement stalled due to this flattening. He writes, the only technological revolution of the last 50 years, computing, was the only one that didn't need more power than could be provided by the technology of the 70s. 
He blames this partly on overregulation killing growth in the energy sector, especially nuclear. And when you distort energy markets, you don't just get expensive gas bills and tank fill-ups, you get fewer innovations that depend on cheap power to scale. This is a classic example of opportunity cost. Every dollar or hour spent navigating regulation is a dollar not spent on building the future. Henry Hazlitt had a phrase for this, the seen and the unseen. The seen is a new regulation that sounds safe and necessary. The unseen? The flying car that never got built. The company that never launched. The future that got postponed. This is the precautionary principle on steroids. Block anything new until it's proven 100% safe. It sounds prudent until you realize it strangles innovation. Drones could have been delivering burritos in 2015, but the FAA dragged its feet. Nuclear could power entire cities and fleets, but fear won the day. And flying cars, they're victims of the same mindset. Markets are amazing at finding what works when we let them. Innovators can overcome the laws of physics, but harder to defeat is a system that requires perfection before progress. But maybe, just maybe, we're finally clearing the runway. The FAA recently created a new category for air taxis. Countries like Japan and Germany are streamlining rules. Startups are pushing boundaries. We're not stuck forever, but we do have to choose. Fear of failure or personal flight. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and check out fee.org for the full article. And tune in for more Fee Explains, where we demystify fallacies, misconceptions, and myths of modern economics. See you in the skies.